students. This is the testing in cardiology, part of the pharmacotherapy of cardiovascular system. So uh, I'm Dr. Kuku. We'll have uh, families together. Uh, so uh, testing or any investigation uh, is done to reach out the diagnosis and at the time to, to decide the management options. So among the testing cardiology, the top on the list is ECG or electrocardiogram, which has a role in the diagnosis of ischemic heart disease, arrhythmia, left ventricular hypertrophy, atrial enlargement, and electrolyte imbalance. So whenever we think of uh, these pathologies, we need to have electrocardiogram of the patient. So uh, for any patient who came with the chest pain, ECG is the single most important uh, test to, to uh, know the cause of the chest pain. Uh, and for doing the ECG, we need to actually um, stabilize the patients and uh, uh, take the vital sign to, to know whether the patient is critical or not. If the patient is very critical, uh, stabilization comes first. In patient with the acute coronary syndrome, we'll see uh, uh, another topic on uh, acute coronary syndrome. So in any patient with the acute coronary syndrome, the ECG is the sole test required to select the patient for emergency reperfusion, which is the life-saving management. Most patients with myocardial infarction will have an abnormal electrocardiogram. And 50% of, uh, in a fertile study, about 50% of patients with acute myocardial infarction will have a diagnostic finding like ST segment elevation, new uh, left bundle branch broke, or Q, Q waves. And about 35% of the case they will have finding concerned with ischemia, which is uh, uh, evidenced by SC sequence depression and or T wave inversion. In patients presenting with acute chest pain who have normal electrocardiogram, the chance of acute myocardial infarction is much, much, much less than 10%, and in some of the studies, it's about less than 2%. Uh, less than 2%. So, uh, this means that. Uh, normal ECG uh, can almost exclude the uh, possibility of myocardial infarction. In fact, ECG is not uh, uh, solely associated with the cardiac condition because uh, abnormal ECG can be found in non-cardiac conditions like pulmonary embolism, electrolyte abnormalities, and aortic dissection. So other uh, testing or investigation to be done uh, in any patient with uh, uh, cardiac problems, particularly in patients with ischemic heart disease or coronary arterial disease, is cardiac biomarkers. So, serum cardiac biomarkers, determination play, play a um, uh, pivotal role in the evaluation of patients who present with acute chest pain and in the diagnosis of acute MI or acute myocardial infarction. We have uh, uh, commonly two uh, uh, cardiac biomarkers that are CKMEB isoenzyme and uh, troponin. This CKMEB is a cardiac specific and useful for the early diagnosis of acute MI. And and and, and uh, uh, CKMEB typically is detectable in the serum within four to six hours after the onset of ischemia, uh, and will reach the peak in about uh, two, 12 to 24 hours and normalize in two to three days. So now, uh, uh, when is the, uh, the time to rise? When is the time for uh, to reach peak? And when does the time for normalization is very important? Uh, because, for example, if the patient has uh, MI and uh, uh, sending CKMB after five or three days, is, uh, after three or four days is uh, not useful because uh, even though the patient become ischemic, uh, CKM will be no, will normalize within two to three days. And again, uh, for example, if the patient come with within uh, an hour of uh, uh, MI uh, complaint or ischemic complaint, again doing CKM is not uh, reasonable because 
uh, it takes time to, uh, for the CKMV uh, to rise. So it's, it, is, it is advisable to do CKMV typically after uh, four to six hours of onset of uh, ischemia. The peak CKMV level does not predict infarct size, however, it can be used to detect early reinfarction since it normalizes two to three days after the initial uh, myocardial infarction. And the serial CKMV levels commonly are obtained at admission to the emergency department and are repeated in uh, six or 12 hours if there is a normal CKMV initially. Another very important cardiac biomarker is the cardiac troponin. We have um, uh, subtypes of uh, uh, troponin like T, troponin T, troponin I, and troponin Z, which are found in stereotyped, meaning uh, skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle. Because the cardiac and skeletal muscle isoform of troponin T and I are I differ, they are known as cardiac troponins. They are preferred markers for the diagnosis of uh, myocardial injury. Uh, one thing you need to know is that these uh, uh, cardiac biomarkers are not usually uh, released by cardiac uh, uh, muscle. They on only released when there is injury to the, the cardiac muscle, be it ischemia or infarction. So troponin T and I have similar sensitivity for the detection of myocardial injury, but unlike troponin I levels, troponin T may be elevated in patients with renal disease, polymyositis, uh, or dermatomyositis. This uh, showed that troponin T, um, uh, troponin I is uh, very specific than troponin II. So if both of them are available, um, it's recommendable to have troponin uh, I. The cardiac troponin typically are measured at emergency department admission and repeated in uh, 6 to 12 hours. Patients with normal CKMV level but elevated troponin levels are considered to have sustained minor myocardial damage or microinfarction, whereas patients with elevation of both CKMV and troponin are considered to have had acute myocardial infarction. The cardiac troponin may remain elevated up to two weeks after the symptom onset, which makes them useful as late marker of recent acute myocardial infarction. So knowing the timing of um, uh, initial rise, the peak, and the when to normalize is very important in uh, using these cardiac biomarkers as uh, an indicator for cardiac injury. So an elevated troponin T or I is helpful for identifying patients at increased risk for death or development of acute myocardial infarction. Increased risk is related to the high serum troponin levels, unlike that of CKMB, where uh, the size or the number of um, uh, rise has no uh, direct relation with the days. Uh, troponin level has indication or association with um, uh, days. Because the higher the troponin level, the more likely uh, days will occur. Troponin also can help identify low risk patients who may be sent home with uh, clo close follow up. So, if the troponin level is very low, uh, we can comfortably send the patient to home with close follow up. Uh, uh, those with normal or nearly normal ECG and the normal troponin IT is six hours after the admission had a very low risk of major, uh, major cardiac events. Uh, the risk of uh, major cardiac events if both uh, ECG and the troponin are normal is about less than 0 0.3 uh, during the next 13 days, 30 days. Myoglobin, which is another uh, cardiac biomarker which is not as such available, uh, begins to rise as early as one to four hours after the onset of pain. So it, is, so it is the earliest as compared to CKMB and the troponin. Myoglobin uh, is the earliest to rise, but it's not as such available. And it's normalized. A normal myoglobin at four hours has a very high negative predictive value, meaning that if the patient comes with a complaint of the chest pain, and you do the myoglobin after within four hours, and if the myoglobin is normal, so the likelihood of having uh, myocardial infarction is almost null. That is what I mean by uh, uh, negative predictive value. It can, uh, if there is normal, so there is no. We can say there is no myocardial uh, infarction. This is the uh, graphic de deficit of the uh, um, cardiac enzyme uh, serum levels association to the time. So this is the days after infarction, and this is serum enzyme level, uh, and this is the normal level. 
is a horizontal one, is a normal level. So uh, both CKMB and the troponin will rise within uh, almost 12 hours of uh, the occurrence of myocardial infarction, but the CKMB uh, will peak first within about 24 hours, then it will normalize within two to three days, within two to three days. But the CKMB will stay for a longer period of time and it will reach uh, the peak within about uh, seven days and it will normalize within about 15 days. So um, uh, troponin is almost uh, recommendable or preferred the CKMB as it lasts for a long period of uh, time. Those are very important uh, uh, testing or imaging in uh, any cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular pathologies, echocardiography. Most echocardiography is the, the gold standard for the most of the uh, cardiac problem. So echocardiography visualizes heart in real time with ultrasound. It is just visualizing the heart with using ultrasound with Doppler recording non-invasively assess hemodynamics, that is blood flow and abnormal flow patterns. Imaging may be compromised in some of the patient, like patient with obstructive uh, lung disease uh, or with the thick chest wall. <coughs> so this is the table uh, showing the clinical use of echocardiograph. We will have uh, there is availability of two di dimension echo, which is, uh, is uh, important for uh, uh, visualizing the cardiac chambers, the size, whether there is hypertrophy or not, wall motion abnormalities, valves. You know the valve, the valve morphology and the motion. Uh, to visualize the pericardium if, it, if there is effusion or tamponade uh, in case of aorta to look for aneurysm or dissection uh, uh, to look for any intracardiac masses uh, we can use 2D uh, uh, echocardiograph uh, TEE that is transesophageal uh, echocardiography is superior to two dimension echo to identify one infective endocarditis which is one of the infectious cause of the uh, cardiac problems in fact it's one of the fatal form of cardiac disease. Uh, if there is cardiac source of embolism, we can use TEE. And artificial or prosthetic valve dysfunction, we can again use TEE for that. Uh, if there is aortic disse dissection, again, TEE is superior to the two-dimension echocardiograph. Doppler echocardiograph for uh, valvular stenosis and regurgitation. Uh, and if there is any intracardiac shunt or diastolic feeling or dysfunction, and to approximate intracardiac pressure, we use Doppler echocardiograph and stress echocardiography. There is what you call stress echocardiography to assess myocardial ischemia and viability, viability of the cardiac muscle. So this is what some of the uh, uh, usage of uh, echocardiography in uh, cardiac disease. So the selection of imaging tests uh, we can use echo, nuclear, CT scan, MRI. Uh, uh, so for most of the uh, cardiac problem, echocardiography is the best. For example, in the uh, left ventricular size or function, the initial one I talk about is um, echocardiograph and valve disease. It is an, again initial one I talk choice um, uh, uh, for precardial disease, for aortic disease, cardiac mass, for all this, the uh, echocardiograph is the best. But at time, we can use CT scan and MRI, uh, especially if the uh, initial echocardiography is non-conclusive or equivocal. This is a visualization of the uh, left ventricle by using echo. Uh, this is the, again, left ventricle, and this is left atrium. Uh, so echo is just used for uh, 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 visualizations of this chamber, cardiac chamber and, uh, and, and, and valves. This is, again, left ventricle. We can measure the size of the left ventricle here. We can, uh, wall thickness can be obtained from echocardiograph. And again, here there is a valve then there's a valve, we can, we can measure the, the diameter and the size of the valve by using echocardiograph. Uh, so based on the echocardiograph finding, we can uh, 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 classify the dysfunction of the, or the abnormality as systolic or uh, diastolic. Uh, for example, if the, uh, by the way, by using echocardiograph, again, we can calculate ejection fraction. Ejection fraction is uh, one of the most important uh, uh, parameters in, in, in uh, designing or choosing the drug of choice or the drug for the management of uh, for hypertension or for congestive heart failure. So 
uh, this ejection fraction can be measured by using uh, equal. So if the ejection fraction is uh, reduced, for example, less than 45%, that this function is systolic, uh, but if it is normal, it is diastolic. And uh, again, uh, remodeling, is that is centric, that is central, or concentric? If it is centric remodeling, that is systolic dysfunction. But if it's concentric, it's left ventricular remodeling. For you, uh, knowing whether it is systolic and diastolic dysfunction, does it matter? Yes, of course. Uh, in drug selection, uh, it is important to know whether it is systolic or diastolic dysfunction. Uh, in fact, one of the most currently um, acceptable classification of uh, heart failure is, is that heart failure with reduced ejection fraction or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. If it is with preserved ejection fraction, that is diastolic dysfunction. But if it is with reduced ejection fraction, that is systolic dysfunction, and the mat management and the prognosis um, differ. differ. Other imaging or test in uh, cardiology is chest X-ray. Chest X-ray is again uh, important for the in knowing the cardiac problem. Uh, among the um, uh, information we uh, will have from chest X-ray is uh, the cardiac size. The cardiac size. So the cardiac size here is the uh, uh, one of the uh, X-ray finding of a patient with cardiac disease. Um, how, how can we see? How can how we can use? The cardiac size for uh, uh, or knowing health problem is uh, uh, first of all we need to measure the uh, thoracic uh, cage that is thoracic border from this border to this border should be measured and then this uh, large size cardiac size should be measured from this this is the cardiac this is the X-ray of the cardiac the heart. So we'll measure again the size from left to right to left. After measuring right to left, we'll divide the size from right size side to left side, and we'll divide it for the whole uh, diameter line. First, we'll measure the card the uh, thoracic cage. Then we'll measure the cardiac um, total cardiac span. Then we'll we will uh, uh, classify the cardiac size by the whole thoracic. If the size is greater than 0 0.5, we can say the heart is enlarged with what you call it, cardiomegaly. This information can be obtained from chest X-ray. Again, uh, there are some indicators for pulmonary hypertension, uh, pulmonary edema, with the uh, upward projection of the bronchovasculature, bronchial vasculature, what you call it, cephalization. This cephalization uh, that can be obtained from X-ray again. There is curly B lens, which is a linear density of interlobular interstitial edema over the lower lobes, which are typical finding in acute heart failure, again, heart failure. So the three most important um, uh, 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 notes we can uh, have from chest X-ray in patients with cardiac disease is the cardiac size, the cephalization, and curly B lines. Um, this is the chest X-ray we have. Um, uh, discussed before. Again, if there is any infusion at this fluid accumulation, uh, that will uh, obliterate the uh, uh, co cost of radic angle. That is the angle between the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm. Uh, the angle between the diaphragm and the uh, ribs. That is that indicates the, there is a fluid. Fluid accumulation will be again one of the complications of heart failure, like rural effusion and the like. And again, we can. Um, say something from chest X-ray for uh, cardiac tamponade for the valvular heart disease. So chest X-ray uh, has paramount role in knowing some uh, cardiac pathologies. Uh, this is the cues, which was the following is the single most important test in the management of chest pain. A CKMP, B troponin, C echocardiography, C electrocardiogram. Uh, sorry, D electrocardiogram, E chest CT. So for any patient with chest pain, single most important is electrocardiogram. And after electrocardiogram, probably you can do what? Cardiac biomarkers, preferably troponin. So thank you for your um, uh, attention. And if you have any question or suggestion or comment, please welcome and we'll communicate through the uh, telegram or
uh, by email. Uh, have a nice time.